What's up, everyone? This is Tony, and welcome back to my podcast. Before we get started today, I do want to remind everyone to please smash the like button and the subscribe button down below to show some support for the channel. And of course, it does help with the YouTube algorithm. So let's get into the podcast now. Joining us today is a four-time ju uh, junior national champion and also a six-time junior Pan Am gold medalist. And he's also my good friend, uh, Don Averia. What's up, Don? What's up, Tony? How you doing, man? I'm doing good. Thank you. Thanks for having me on the podcast. Of course, man. You're great at badminton. Very accomplished, of course, man. And um, by the way, I want to say congratulations again to Cal Poly Pomona. You know, thank you. Great. Congrats to you and uh, UCLA, obviously. Thank you. That's thank you. That's pretty amazing you. achievement. Thank you. I didn't expect yeah. it, but you know, thank you. Yeah. Um, some people don't know, but Don's actually uh, younger than uh, younger than me by one year, so it's actually early for him to go to college. So, congrats to you, man. Um, so, <laughs> remember the first time we met. Um, was actually in the Boston JIT a long, long time ago, and mm -hmm. it was your it was your first uh, uh, tournament in the U.S. Right? Mm -hmm. And a funny story, you know, I we were supposed to play like the next day, and a lot of parents came up to me and was like, "Hey, Tony, you gotta watch out for this new kid. Like, he's coming up hard and he's beating everybody." Right? And I was like, "Man, this new kid. Who the hell? Like, who cares about this kid, man? Like, he's a new guy. Usually, when when new people come on, they're like really, you know, bad. So I didn't yeah, think yeah. too much about it. And then, man, the next day I came up onto the court and you completely just demolished me the first set. I was like, oh my <laughs> god, oh my god, this kid. And then, yeah, you end up winning that game. And then, you know, you made it to the Pan Ams and stuff. Actually, mm -hmm. uh, we all went to Pan Ams that year together. Um, yeah. Was, how did that? Yeah. 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 <clears throat> And, but how was that tournament for you? Because obviously it was your first time playing a tournament in the U.S. Um, did you expect to go that far for that tournament? I went into the tournament with like little to no expectation because I didn't know the level that the U.S. was at. And before the tournament, I actually went to Maryland to stop because um, it's Boston, so it's pretty near. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I played Bobby Huang. I remember playing him for practice and I lost to him because he was like the one of the top U13 at the time and I was U11. Mm -hmm. I lost him. It was a close game. And I was like, oh, that got me really nervous, especially because my first game was Aaron, Aaron Lowe. And he was a two seed at the time. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. Just the whole tournament was a blur to me. Mm -hmm. I just remember like going into it. I was like, I'm just going to play my best. I'm going to try my mm -hmm. best. And, yeah, yeah, for sure. You definitely earned our respect that tournament. Like, everybody in our age group, we were like, damn. That guy's going to be really strong, you know, in the future and stuff. And it's going to be a problem for us. <laughs> but, but of course, we appreciate you coming in. And, um, yeah. Um, also, talking about Bobby Hart, remember, uh, Bobby's actually like a video game player now, right? Yeah. He plays, um, Jungle for Cloud Nine and League of Legends. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a big um, deal. Big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Some of my friends are like bigger gamers. So, like, they know and they were like, oh my God, that guy's like amazing or something. I was like, mm -hmm, you know? mm -hmm. but Bobby used to be really good at badminton. Um, when he played mm -hmm. uh, a, a lot of people actually don't know this but you actually started your badminton journey in Qatar uh, mm -hmm. not in the U.S. so how is it starting in Qatar because obviously I don't think it was too popular there at the moment no it, it it was gaining traction to say the least but I was like the first batch of um, kids who wanted to train and like actually like take it serious and you know mm -hmm. instead of just being in clubs and stuff kind of like the so. first generation right yeah, yeah. So it was like we were kind of like I don't want to say trendsetters, but we we're the first ones, and everyone followed us. Mm -hmm. Kind of the trendsetter. Oh. Uh, you you like to give yourself that <laughs> trendsetter, right? I can tell. <laughs> yeah, we're yeah. the originals, man. I mean, yeah. There you go. Hey, yeah. that's cool, man. Um, did you feel like you had a lot of pressure, you know, as the first generation coming out of Qatar, um, playing badminton to win some? Not really, because again, there was like no expectation because we were the first. Nobody really knew what would happen with us and I was really happy with the group that I started with because we were all um just in it for the fun and it was just really competitive though so because mm -hmm. we we it was pretty um small courts at the time there was like one court um for like 30 of us so we mm -hmm. do a lot of like footwork all the time that's why my footwork was pretty good yeah when I was younger so yeah yeah, your focus is pretty good. Now, now I know why your focus is so, so freaking good. Yeah. And uh, that's probably why you're also so great at singles, you know. Um, <laughs> but besides, you know, training in the U.S., um, you also obviously train internationally in Qatar, you know, where you started, and also mm -hmm. in the Philippines and, of course, Indonesia. So mm -hmm. um, not a lot of people have that opportunity. So what was it like to train in those uh, other countries? You know, what was, you know, same or different from training in the U.S.? 
I'd say in training with different coaches, you definitely see how each coach has their own distinct style and how different um, coaches approach badminton in a different way. So a lot of Asia, they focus on like the physical. So when I went to the Philippines, that was my first time training internationally and I did a summer there. It was great. There was a lot of, um, a lot of really good players that were older than me that I didn't have in Qatar. So I had a lot of sparring nice. and they focused a lot on improving my technical skill as well, mm -hmm. which I did because I had um, like one-on-one -on -one training there and I didn't mm -hmm. have that in Qatar. So that was a nice new experience for me because I trained in um, WWGBA there. Oh, okay. And then when I trained in Indonesia, they're very repetitive. So they have a fixed schedule. So like Monday, it's mm -hmm. like multi Tuesdays running Wednesdays, this and that. So I kind of like that structure. And then there they kind of, the players are like, they're like family because they live together in the same quarters. And, oh yeah, and uh, it's kind of a do or die type thing there. Cause like you either make it in badminton as a pro or you, or you just become a coach. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they're all very motivated and being around really motivated people made me really motivated. And that's probably sure. like, what gave me my push to like want to go pro. I I'd see. Say. I see. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Um, you know, I've actually had the opportunity to train in China, um, in yeah, the yeah. Shenyang province team. We were talking about it before. Um, and I think the thing that separates, uh, them from like training in the U S is that, you know, their, their level of discipline and of yeah. course their, um, systematic schedule, you know, they have a schedule where they follow and they do it, you know, no matter what. And of course, you know, they, they kind of put their whole life into it. Unlike us where we have school. Yeah. So, I, I mean, it only works for them, but I think it's really important for athletes. I don't know about you. Uh, you can't agree with me or not, but I think it's really important for athletes to have that discipline, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. that work ethic to be, mm -hmm. to be able to be su successful in uh, sports, right? What do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think also it's, I don't want to say it's easier for them to be disciplined, but you got to think like they're like, so Indonesia was like in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. So all they have, it was like one little mall, a few little restaurants here and there, but like their entertainment was badminton. So their day off, they'd probably play because like all they had was badminton. So yeah, I like to say it's, it takes a lot more discipline when you have a lot more distractions. And that's what we have here in the U S because yeah. we have, you know, school and there's like, you know, we want to go out and we want to hang out with our friends and stuff. Yeah. So you have to be really disciplined with yourself. And so, yeah. Yeah. Nice. That's a really good one. You, you put in the words for me, but nice. That was good. <laughs> good point. Um, and obviously, you know, you've had many coaches in your life, unlike me who, you know, had the same coaches throughout my life. Um, but if you had to stay with one coach for the rest of your life, who, who would it be? Of course, I, I want to, I'd say coach Tony. Like I'm with him <laughs> oh, at GBA oh, right I, now. I almost thought, yeah. I almost thought you said me. I was like, what? Coach, okay, yeah, okay. coach Co Tony Luzo, you know, he's no, a great no, no. coach. He's helped he, he, me improve from when no, I was 11. No, no, no. To, no. He, he, um, he's, he, he's talking about uh, Coach Tony Gunawan. He's talking about him. Yeah, ahead, a coach. GBA. Um, I feel like, you know, with his experience being in the Olympics and everything and winning at the highest level, he has a lot. I, I always, like, talk to him when I, like – so, like, recently I watched the Denmark Open. We talk about, like, you know, how – what separates the top players from, the like, you know, just – great club mm -hmm. players yeah and he has since he has a lot of experience like i just love that i can ask him all these questions and learn a lot from him mm -hmm. so i'd say coach tony but i want to I, I of course i love my coaches from each level you know yeah, in qatar course. um and then the philippines and they all they all taught me something different so i'm really blessed that i you know had mm -hmm. the opportunity to train with all of them mm -hmm. definitely um you know coach tony is a great coach mm -hmm. um a great doubles player uh he, you know, fun fact, I actually you, like to um, watch some of his games before my doubles. Uh, yeah, matches, definitely. Yeah. Because it helps you get into that like mindset of like, what you need to do, kind yeah. of like how to set up the best shot and then get, get ready for the next one. Right. And he's really good at those kind of things. He, his reflexes are amazing. Right. So um, and I also had the opportunity to have him as like a coach in uh, Junior Pan Am once. And mm -hmm. I, I really want him to coach me for one game, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. I did have him as a coach for that one game, but it was kind of like an easy game. So he didn't really say much, but I just, I, yeah. I really, yeah, I really did, you know, cause he's obviously an uh, Olympian and, and yeah, great player too. Um, but anyway, you, you played a lot of international tournaments um, besides mm -hmm. training internationally. You, you played a lot of international tournaments and which tournament resonated with you the most? 
Um, I would say probably my when I played in the Swedish Junior. There was a Swedish Junior Open that I played, and that was just a lot of fun because I played with a we we made a group called Team International that played a team event against like um, the A team of Denmark Juniors at the time, and then the French team, the Swedish team, and there's a lot of really good European players. So I got to play like against the top players for singles there. Mm-hmm. And then of course I had my own main draw that I had to go into so I had a lot of um ex- uh, exposure to like the top level of European badminton so that was a lot of fun. I see. Would you say that's like the toughest international tournament for you by far? Yeah. That that's been the toughest probably. I remember or I could say Singapore was my first like real internet outside of the US that's real cool. international tournament um and I lost like second round. Mm-hmm. So that was it was a it was a big eye opener to see like the level that some of these kids are at even though they're mm-hmm. my age and stuff. Yeah. But of course Pan Am is also a lot of fun. I remember like Mexico and we were in a resort. Yeah, yeah. That was a uh-huh. lot of fun. The court was trash there though. I'm sorry. Like Yeah, yeah. It was so hot. Do you remember that? It was like an oven, Yeah, I remember. Dude. It was like a tent. It, we played in a tent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. like lower, right? Too. Yeah, and it was super hot, like damp and like like your sweat would stick onto it. It would not evaporate. So it's like mm. like completely just ah, uh, it's like it's crazy. But I was gonna ask you about Pan Ams. Like you play obviously you play a lot of Pan Ams, winning six gold medals um in the Pan Am games. Which Pan Am was like the most enjoyable for you, like the most fun? Because we have a lot the of fun. The most games. fun would be I think I think it would be Mexico or Peru. Mexico mm-hmm. or Peru, because those are the ones where I had the most friends in. Mm-hmm. So Peru, obviously, you know, I made friends with like a, a bunch of Team Canada people. And then I got yeah. closer with the Team USA people mm-hmm. with like you and uh, Cody Lee. And uh, Cody Lee was in um, was it Guatemala, I think. I remember getting closer to there. Yeah. So I'd say it's, I'd say probably between those two. I see. I see. I, I agree. The Peru one was really good, especially the after party. Do you remember the after party? Bro? Yeah, that was fun. That was lit. Yeah. You know, all the other countries like Canada, they never do like an after party or anything. But mm-hmm. Peru had like a crazy after party. It was great. Um, and also, I don't know if you remember this. Remember the Canada one that we played in that huge, like, uh, like huge gym that was connected to that the was hotel? my first one. Yeah. Yeah. The first one. That one. Was a water I that park. One was, yeah. There yeah. was a water park. And yeah. uh, what was it? Ice skating rink. In, yeah. Uh, like on the way. I was yeah. like, that's crazy. I thought that was like a great, yeah. it was really fun. And also that was my, that was where I won my uh, gold medal. But I, I thought that was one of my favorites, you know. And of course, obviously you do a lot of traveling, whether it's junior Pan Ams or uh, playing in Singapore or playing in Sweden or wherever it may be, right? You do a lot of traveling. Um, how do you juggle between school and training, you know? Um, I just try to, I'm just really disciplined. My mom makes me really dis. I, I give the credit to my mom and my my dad because mm-hmm. they make sure like oh you they always made the rule where um in order to play I needed to keep up on my studies and my grades. Mm-hmm. So if I didn't have the good grades, I'd have to skip training and you know study yeah. more. But school is pretty um e- not easy, but like I I kind of steamrolled it. So. Mm-hmm. I would, I would just try hard in class. As long as I listened in class, I was one of those people that like, of course I would do the homework, but there wasn't a heavy homework load where I used to go to school, like yeah. growing up. Mm-hmm. So as long as I focused in class, I would do well in the test. And that was the main thing. I see. I see. Yeah. Nice. Um, talking about your parents, um, I was going to ask, uh, you know, how, cause a lot of parents, you know, they prioritize education. Like you got to do education where you got to get into college. You got, you know, those, that's priority. Right. And training comes second. So, but mm-hmm. f- um, for your parents, like your household, do you guys ever have that debate between, you know, education and, and badminton? No, my parents made it really clear that even if I wanted to go pro, I needed to get my college degree. I really need to mm-hmm. focus on school all the time, maintain a high GPA and they have high standards for both, you know? Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah that's it's really good. challenging that's but i like the challenge nice nice perfect i mean it pushes you right you know to do yeah. good in both or else like you can't have the other one and mm-hmm. obviously I- i'm sure you in- love playing badminton you know mm-hmm, i think you yeah. have a passion for it right and going back to your accomplishments you obviously won six gold medals in junior panels which is amazing right amazing mm-hmm. crazy crazy good um and one of those gold medals was actually against uh me and Derek I hate to talk about it but <laughs> <laughs> I, you, yeah. I never like to lose but one of them was against me and Derek so how did you feel playing that game 
I was, I, I was, my partner was Eric, Eric Duong. Mm-hmm. And we, we have a lot of fun when we play doubles. We, cause we obviously don't train together. Yeah. Um, but he is a very free minded badminton player. If that makes sense. Like he yeah. just plays to have fun and he's like kind of mm-hmm. freestyle. If I were to describe yeah. him as a, in one word. Mm-hmm. So, um, we went in and we weren't really nervous. We were just like, we're just going to have fun. We're going to play our hardest. We're going to, cause we're also both kind of singles players at the time. So, yeah. Um, it was just a lot. Of, I just remember having a lot of fun because the atmosphere was crazy. And then obviously yeah. we knew each other and we lost to you guys at JIT. Yeah. We kind of, it, it wasn't like, it wasn't even that close at JIT. So yeah. that's why we went into the game. Like, Oh, we're just going to have fun. We're going to see how mm-hmm. this goes. And then we were leading. I was like, dude, and like in a, I was like, dude, this is crazy. Like, what are we doing right now? We're playing out of our minds. Uh-huh. He was like, yeah, dude. I just remember yeah. it, was, it was a lot of fun for us. Wow, well, you guys were you. feeling that. It's okay. Well, while <laughs> you guys were feeling like, you know, wow, we're having so much fun. We were freaking out on the other side. Yeah, of the yeah, court. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're like, oh my God, what are we going to do? We need to win this game. Because yeah. I think we were favored to win that game because we won. Yeah, like, definitely. Right. So we, you destroyed you know, us at JIT and you were like on a roll in um, the yeah. national tournaments. So. Yeah, so we expected ourselves to win. And, like, I think especially for me, um, I'm sure Derek, he, he he's still very focused and he he wants to get that gold medal. But for me, it was like, we got this game. Like I was like, ah, mm-hmm. it's over, man. Like, we beat him every single time this year. It, it's over. But, I, man, while you guys were, like, having fun on the other side, we were like, oh, my God, this is crazy. We're about to lose this game. <laughs> and it was super tight. Um, I don't know if you remember, but the score was, like, 28-26, third game. So it was, like, a mm. tight game. And, man, <sighs> This is we just had fun. That was a lot of fun, man. Yeah. yeah 20, 26, like, I just remember that. Yeah. Uh-huh. And like you say, like Eric's like a very free, like to player. I, I know what you mean, because he's so unpredictable. Because I play with it, I played against so him. Unpredictable. So unpredictable. So yes. unpredictable. Because he he just plays the shot that he likes to play. Like some of yeah. the shots that he some of the shots that he does may not make sense, but it's gonna work. It, he makes yeah. it work. You know, yeah. so <laughs> he's actually a really tough opponent. Um, he is really t- he, definitely. He does these trick shots. I was shots. always, I was oh always yeah, God. he does a lot of trick shots and like kind of yeah. unorthodox badminton sometimes. Yeah. But I was I always loved um, the idea of like, oh, I'm so glad that he's my partner and I'm playing against this guy. Like this guy yeah. is so crazy. Because uh-huh. he'd just be standing like stationary and I don't know where he'll yeah. just dive. And he'll reach yeah. everything. I'm like, what the? Yeah, he just oh. stands there. He doesn't even like, he, he rarely does like the like yeah. full on get yeah, ready. He just stands pose. there. Yeah, he just stands there like half uh-huh. bent, maybe like uh-huh. just ready. Oh my god, and he goes for it, but but yeah, he has great reflexes as well. Um, obviously, talking about nationals now. Um, in the you won four national titles, uh, which is amazing. And but in the 2019 one, the most recent one, you mm-hmm. lost to Jacob Zane in the U19 singles mm-hmm. finals. Um, how'd you feel playing that game? Also, like, what do you think? You know, you come up short in for that game. Um, that was that was tough because the previous year I also lost in the final to Alex and I was younger. So I was mm-hmm. playing up both years and I was, you know, I was like, Oh, I can get, if I get this gold now, it's like a great head start. And like, yeah. you know, it just feels good for me, my, my confidence. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I remember too, because in, I beat Alex in that tournament. So 2019, 2018, I lost Alex in the final 2019. Mm-hmm. I played him in the quarter final and I beat him in like that hour and a half long game. I was amazing. Like it was so long. It was grueling because mm-hmm. my, my feet, like, you know how you get calluses at the bottom. Yeah. Of your feet. Both oh, of they them start burning. Gone. Oh yeah, God. My, my, my socks, like they had holes, dude. It was crazy. Oh my God. And then after that, I played Karthik and mm-hmm. I was losing like 18, 12. And I came back in the first set and Dang. I won in two games. But so I was, I was already like, I was already like, Oh, I got through the hard part. Like this is, mm-hmm. I, I don't want to say like I was on, un- underestimating jacob but i was like in my mind i was already like these two great accomplishments like i felt like that was it and so when i played jacob my mindset wasn't right and i was like not as focused as i wanted to be for the game so that's definitely something that i learned uh after losing to jacob and he's also a really smart player he's really really on me when he played me that game he put a lot of pressure on me so mm-hmm. like the back and like he just hit a lot of like double style shots nice. and i wasn't expecting that because you know karthik plays a smart game but it's a little bit slower mm-hmm. so a, a and then alex also patient. a lot slower patient yeah. and like yeah, yeah they're very they like to they guy. like to drag it out they like to drag, they like it, to out. drag it out they like to yeah. wait for the opportunity but yeah um jacob just goes for it he's like he's like 100 yeah. in the rally like 
Yeah. So, yeah, it was a lot of fun to play him. Really stressful, obviously, because I lost. But, mm-hmm. you know, I learned I learned a lot from that. Yeah, those those things, you know, you learn by making mistakes. Obviously, it's exactly the same from, like, that Pan Am game we played, you know, where yeah. I was like, it's the same thing. You know, every player has those moments, but we learn from it, right? Mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. of course, Jacob was on here, you know, uh, two weeks ago. Yeah, two weeks mm-hmm. ago. Um, and he has a lot of respect for you obviously and i have a lot of respect for those yeah yeah yeah. they're really good they kind of came out of nowhere too yeah they did i remember yeah yeah william William shout out to william he's a great player too so yeah they're both really attacking and there's a lot of fun to play with but it's also stressful yeah yeah for sure definitely um obviously you're a very talented player you you're very accomplished right in badminton and a lot of people see you as this perfect player that doesn't really have any flaws or you know close to no flaws right but um, every band player has something. So um, did you ever have like a moment where you doubted yourself or you felt like you weren't good enough? Uh, yes. Um, I think the first games that come in mind are those two junior nationals. So when I lost both, uh, cause in 2018 so 2019 obviously i just explained was you know i won two great matches right before and i felt like i had a great opportunity because i beat last year's champion in the Mm quarterfinal and then i beat another favorite in karthik yeah but 2018 the year before i was playing alex and i lost in two sets but i was leading both sets at 11 11 4 or like Mm -hmm. 11 6 for both sets and then i ended up losing i I cracked under the pressure because i was like Mm -hmm. ahead and i i must have I feel like I relaxed too much when I look back at the videos. So those two definitely like, like kind of cracked in my confidence a little bit. Um, Mm. You know, you kind of learn from it. Yeah. It happens sometimes. Yeah. You learn and move on because you know, you you can't stick to that. There's no point in dwelling. Just look at your mistakes and then try to see what you can do better and see how you can come back stronger. So yeah. Yeah. Just make changes, make changes, you Mm -hmm. know, and then it eventually makes you better. That's how you, you do it. You know, you live and you learn. And talking about, you know, all your accomplishments, do you ever have pressure um, for like, you know how good players are, you know, when, when you start getting mm-hmm. a lot of accomplishments, you sometimes you feel a lot of pressure. Do you, do you have that? I had pressure for sure. Cause I was always performing well when I played up. Mm-hmm. So I was, and then when I play up, I like playing up because the expectation for me was like, Oh, just, just do your best. Like my parents were like, just do your best. And, see how it goes like there there was no like oh you you you're more you're likely to win so when i played in my age group that's when i felt more nervous because i was like oh because i played well up i should be playing well in my own age group Mm -hmm. um yeah and then the more i won obviously the more people were like i i had this thing where like they would ask me in like staging area like oh who are you playing or like afterwards after my game they'll be like Mm -hmm. oh so who'd you beat i'm like dude you don't even know if i won yet like you have to ask if (laughs) i won you can't Uh just assume because yeah I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's probably it. It just became people expected more of me as I won more. So that's yeah. how the pressure came. Yeah, definitely. I agree, man. And um, it's interesting how you said, like, when you play like a higher age group, you don't feel as much pressure. Like, mm-hmm. I kind of like um, I, 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 I kind of ex- restricted myself from that. Um, where some people, like some players, they may not be good enough. Like, like you're, you're obviously great enough to play up, but some players, they're not even like good enough. And I see them playing like older age group just to escape that kind of pressure, you know? And mm-hmm. they're like, but for me, it was like, a lot of people were like, Tony, just play up. Like you're killing these kids. Right. But like, I'm like, it's a lot of pressure, you know, playing in the lower, like, you know, in this, in your age group when you're yeah. like already that when you're winning. Yeah. 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 So it's actually, um, I was just trying to like, you know, a lot of people didn't understand, but I was just trying to um, exercise my mentality and just, yeah, you know, push definitely. through that kind of pressure. Definitely. But yeah, that, that's a really good point you brought up. And in my opinion, obviously, you have a lot of patience and um, very mature, in, especially in your singles play, right? And you can yeah. kind of, you know what you're saying, you can go back and forth, back and forth and kind of run out the rally, right? Um, if you could give... Uh, advice you know to to younger players who are trying to be more mature trying to be more patient in their singles game what would it be um just one thing that made me more patient was playing with older players and playing with people who are better than me like people i knew were better than me like my coaches or anyone to spar with that was older because you know as much as i try to kill and try to be aggressive um they'd always return it because they're they're bigger they're stronger they're faster 
so that I had to figure out different ways that I could win. And, you know, it's easy to say like, oh, like if your coach tells you, be more patient, you know, you want to uh, wait for the opportunity. Mm-hmm. But when you actually practice it, when you play in the games and you play against better people and you really have to do it in order to stay in the rally, yeah, I feel like that's when you really learn and it like becomes kind of second nature. So I'd say yeah. that. Mm-hmm. It's almost as if like, cause like when you play with faster, stronger players, and then you go back to play with your age group or, you know, mm-hmm. slightly higher, um, all of a sudden the game slows down for you. Right. Mm-hmm, right. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not, is that, is that true? Right. It, it kind of slows That's down for you. For me. Yeah. yeah. It kind of slows down for you. And, but in reality, from people outside of the court, they, when they watch it, you know, they can tell that you're very, they're a lot more patient, a lot more mature mm-hmm. with your shots, your placement, whatever it is. Right. Mm-hmm. So I think that's a really good point where you say, you know, spar with those better people, stronger people, you know, yeah. don't get discouraged too. Like a lot, I see a lot of the younger kids, like they play, see, I play with some of the younger kids at GBA and then they, mm-hmm. they sometimes they like, they sulk like, Oh, I'm getting beat so bad. Like, I mean, yeah. I've been playing for like, a lot longer than they have and i have a lot mm-hmm. more experience so and my con my confidence is a lot higher because i played against like stronger and stronger players mm-hmm. so when i play these players i'm like you know yeah. i'm confident in my ability so yeah don't be afraid to lose is, is basically yeah what it don't is. be afraid to lose everyone yeah. loses yeah, yeah as a champion you know you got to take the losses take the wins it, it's just what it is you know that's that's how sports is you know mm-hmm. and um you got to be mature enough you know to take those and then learn from it and move on that's what it is um fun question <laughs> um, I think out of the three events, obviously, I think right. you're really, really good at singles. Thank out you. of the U.S. badminton player, U.S. junior badminton players for singles, who uh, made it the who gave you the hardest time on the court? Let's say that the hardest time on the court. <clears throat> well, obviously, anyone that's beating me. <laughs> but <laughs> I'd say, I'd say Alex because mm-hmm. he. Well, I, I give a, I'll give a few players that came into mind. So yeah. I say Alex because he really is really, really patient. Mm-hmm. So like every time I play him, it, I have a good game, but then it's mm-hmm. also like a really long game. Yeah. And it's just mentally and physically grueling. Like it's like uh, at least an hour every time I play him. Mm-hmm. And then Karthik with his mind games. Like when I played him that one junior national, mm-hmm. um, no, not the recent one, like my first junior national with him, it was... Mm-hmm. He was like in staging area and he was hyping yeah. himself up and yeah. he was like, Oh, I can beat this guy. I can beat this guy. And I remember I was like, what, dude, what are you saying? I'm right here. That was, that was crazy <laughs> yeah. for me. Cause I was like the first time someone's sort of trash talking. Mm-hmm. And then, um, I'd say Josh Yang, cause I trained with him. So he, he knows my patterns pretty well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and that's something that like Jacob was saying about William. I remember yes, mm-hmm. uh, last two weeks ago or something. And mm-hmm that you don't feel it until you really play them in a tournament and then they start anticipating your shots. Yeah. And then he's also a very tricky player. So yeah. he has those holds and it's just really difficult to deal with. Mm-hmm, definitely. And obviously William and Jacob, mm-hmm. but I also want to say you were really? like one of the, you were one of the biggest challenges for me growing up. Cause Are you serious. Yeah. You were, you were this strong player and you were, very i felt every time i played you mm-hmm. it had to be a huge mental game because you were like you know so like you know yeah, i don't know how to explain I do scream it but like you scream a lot and that got into my head when i was younger and i kind of put that pressure on yeah bit. you would put pressure on me mentally and then you know because you're strong with your strong smashes and your net mm-hmm. so that was a lot of pressure physically and of course the expectation like oh i, I wanted to beat you and i have beaten you before so when i kept playing you i was like oh, i need to yeah. win i need to win Thank and you're you, the man. first player to take me to three set in my own age group. Really? Yeah. Really? In um, JIT, I think, I think it was, it was JIT or JN. Junior National? Yeah, at um, LABC. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I didn't know I was that, the only one, though. Yeah. I didn't know I was the only one. You're the but first. After that, it the became, first. Oh, okay. There, the there first. are more. There are more. Yeah. I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Um, obviously, mm-hmm. I just want to say this. Um, Don is 2-0 two two for, for singles, okay, against me. He, he's won twice. Um, the second one... Ah, oh. the L- the LABC one. I really oh, yeah. wanted to get him, but you were so close. I was so close. It was, I think it was twenty. I was leading twenty what twenty eighteen. I think something yeah. like that. The third set. You were third leading set. eleven six or eleven yeah. four. I was leading yeah. a lot in the in the in the half half time, and then um, I was leading twenty eighteen around there, something like that. And then he, I made mistakes. He caught up, 
ah, uh, you know that and feeling. And I gained the like, momentum, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, and then the pressure was on me, and then I was like, oh my god. And then he he ended up taking the game like twenty two twenty or something. Mm-hmm. And then, man, and ever since then we've just never played. We've never played against each other. We played um, Pan Am. We played Pan Am Peru. Oh right, right, in singles, right against yeah. each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was three set too. That was. That was oh yeah, 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 yeah. And then. After that, we never played together. I, yeah, like played yeah, against yeah, each other. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. was one time where we were supposed to play in CBA, but then I couldn't play. Yeah, my knee. you your yeah. your injury. Yeah, 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 but it it's all right. I'm I'm sure. <laughs> uh, you're probably like so much better now. But <laughs> it, it's all right. I was but looking I, forward to that CBA game. I was like, oh, I I how wanted Tony's changed now. Yeah. Man, if I wasn't injured, I would have played that game, and mm-hmm. I I want to get at least one game off of you. You know, I wanted. Mm-hmm. I was coming for. I you. know. I know. I always come. You're really with. hunting me down for sure. Yeah. 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 But it's all good. Um, do you have anybody else you want to talk about, like for your uh, toilet place or? Mm, I played Clayton a lot growing up, mm-hmm. and he's not the most physically dominating um, player, but mm-hmm. he is a very smart player, and I respect him for that because yeah, I'd play him. Even though I'm playing up, I felt like I was the faster player. Yeah. And I was more aggressive, but he was always very, like, very calm. Mm-hmm. And that's something that I picked up from him um, going into my, um, like, the future. So, because I played him U13 and I lost him in the Nationals. Yeah. And then I, I, I remember just distinctly, uh, distinct, was like, he was a very calm player and he was always, like, um, very controlled. Everything he hit was really controlled. Mm-hmm. So, I think another thing that I want to see for the juniors, if anyone's, like, listening, Mm -hmm. um to (laughs) not like the junior kids that are listening yeah yeah, yeah. um they should they should every time they at least try to take to see like what the strength of their opponent was and try to Mm -hmm. make that one of your strengths so your strength was mental toughness yeah josh's strength is you know his skill and his um like backhand and then Mm -hmm. clayton obviously is his um ability to stay cool under pressure Mm -hmm. so yeah nice that's really good advice um when you were talking about clayton you know the um, it got me thinking like the thing that I respect most about Clayton is that in the beginning of his um, badminton journey, he got beat down a lot, right. By a lot of the good players and, but he never gave up the kid. No, never, he never did. Never, he never gives up. And then he comes mm-hmm. back stronger and stronger every single year, you mm-hmm. know, and now he's one of the, you know, the best junior badminton players, you know, in the end. And, you know, so much respect for that. Cause some people, they just give up after they lose yeah. 10 times, they, they give up, but he never did. And he always come back stronger, you know? So he had that rivalry with Karthik. I remember. Yeah. I would always watch that game when uh, <laughs> like you 11, 13, 15, yeah. I always watch that game. Everyone they go that head game. to head. They go head yeah, to head all they, the time. They, they go head to head all the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's good to have like competition. You know, it's good to have, I'm happy that you came into, you know, us junior band because it makes, you know, makes Thank me better. You. makes everybody mm-hmm. in the age group better because we all strive to, you know, get better than each other. And we just, find yeah. our way up, you mm-hmm. know, and it's important to have competition, you know, it's, mm-hmm. that's good to have. Um, all right, so let's get into the viewers' questions because um, there's quite a few. There's there's a lot more viewers' questions. That's why, you know, I kind of bounced that out a little bit. So mm-hmm. the first question from the viewers, um, you moved um, away from your home at 16. How has life been? Uh, it's been pretty difficult to move away because um, mm-hmm. my, my obviously, I, I don't live with my parents. I live with the, the prayers right now. Mm-hmm. And... They're family friends, so it wasn't that bad. And but it's difficult because I don't say I'm a mama's boy, but like I, I I'm like really close to my mom and yeah. and my dad and um just having them there all the time and just not having their support this time. Like they they have the, I have their support obviously, but yeah, it's different when you're with them and when you're like overseas. Yeah. yeah. But I'd say like my friends here at GBA, they really helped me a lot. So mm-hmm. uh, I want to say. Thank you to those guys because they're kind of my anchors. So, Definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Teammates help you out a lot, you know, whether it's yeah. from your personal yeah. life or just your badminton life. You know, mm-hmm. it's really important to have good teammates around you supporting, especially, mm-hmm. you know, you, you your parents are not with you all the time. So it, mm-hmm. it's good to have them around. That's, that's Yeah, great. they definitely keep me in check a lot. I'll say that. <laughs> they keep that me mean? disciplined. Uh-huh. They, like, if I want to do something, they'll be like, are you sure that's the right decision? Or, like, they they kind of became, like, my older brothers and sisters, even though some of I them see. are younger. Someone like I Cody see. Ma, he's, like, I feel like he's more mature than me. So Oh, really? I, I, I'm a pretty forgetful person. So one thing I always do mm-hmm. is, like, if I go to Owens or Connors or I go to a tournament, they're like, mm-hmm. oh, did you, before I leave, they're like, did you check? That? Did you leave something? Uh-huh. And I'm like, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. 
And then we leave, and I'm like, oh, guys, sorry. <laughs> and I do, you're uh-huh. stupid. So uh-huh. they, 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 they keep you in check like that. Yeah. I see. I see. They That's good. That's me. good. Definitely. That's good. Um, next question What's your favorite song at the moment? I'm not gonna lie, I've been listening to a lot of country recently. Okay, I don't know why, okay. but it's okay. been country. Uh, mm-hmm. I can't think of a song off the top of my head, but uh, it's uh, Keshi released a new album. I've been listening to a lot of Joji too. Nice. So these guys, like, kind of, nice. yeah, classic dudes. Yeah. Good, good. Perfect. Um, Next question. What are your future goals that you are willing to achieve? Um, I want to go to the Olympics, but I don't want to just go. Like, I want to do well in the Olympics. Mm-hmm. And I, I want to kind of play more of the circuit. So a lot of the U.S. players, their mindset is like, I'm going to go to the Olympics. I'm going to try my best. I'm going to, like, have a good performance. Yeah. But they don't really play, like, the, you know, Indonesian Open, the Denmark Open, like, mm-hmm. the, the – well, there were a few players at Denmark Open this year, but yeah. I mean, like, normally there isn't that many. Mm-hmm. So I want to be one of the first. And, that, like, Lauren's kind of doing that now, Lauren Lamb. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I feel like I want to do what kind of like what she's doing, where we play all the tournaments instead of just mm-hmm. focus on, like, getting points nice. with the Olympics. So, yeah. That's that's really that's, that's a really for. good point, you know? Um, yeah. Because a lot of people, you know, they say, oh, I'm going to go play for the Olympics. And then they just play these, like, small Opens like right us open or like like the easier opens right not the ones mm-hmm. in asia or yeah yeah in asia or in uh you know in uh, europe wherever you know so um when i was playing you know when, when we were playing if i told myself that if i wanted to go play the olympics i'm gonna play and then get a medal you know i'm not gonna go mm-hmm. play just for just playing mm-hmm. it doesn't doesn't mean anything to me you know mm-hmm. so it's very important for me to compete so i have mm-hmm. to go if I do play the Olympics, I'm going to go play the Denmark Open. I'm going to go play, you know, uh, yeah, get you know, Indonesia Open. Players. Whatever yeah. it is, I want to win on those tournaments, not like just game points to go, you know, then mm-hmm. it's just no point to, to, to me. And I, I think you agree too, right? It really doesn't really Plus, uh, do much. I've also really wanted to play like in Indonesia because they have like the loudest crowds. And I want to yes. play in places, places where badminton is like huge. So mm-hmm. obviously mm-hmm. My, my top tournaments would be like, I want to play Indonesia. Mm-hmm. I want to play China Open. I want to play French Open and Denmark mm-hmm. Open. Obviously, U.S. Open because it's home soil. Yeah, definitely. So that'll be a lot of fun. That'll be a lot of fun. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, um, for the people that don't know, my mom's actually a two-time world champion, and she's, you know, coach late, right? Um, she um, played against Indonesia, off, you know, often, especially in the finals and stuff, because they're really strong, right? And she always told me they're the loudest you know, like the loudest country, the most passionate country, and they'll be yelling, screaming, whatever it is, right? Even now, they're still like just yelling, screaming, everything in the in the crowd. So it's they're really hyped up, you know, all the time. Mm-hmm. Every so single definitely. shot, they'll scream. Yeah, yeah. Every single shot, especially if you're playing against an Indonesian. Even if it's not an Indonesian, mm-hmm. they'll scream. If it's like a Denmark versus China, mm-hmm. they'll be like, ah, screw it, we're gonna scream anyways. I'm like, yeah, so yeah. much fun, so much fun. Yeah. They just love having fun. It's great. Yeah. Um. Next question. This one you kind of like already answered, but this guy asked, what's it like beating Derek and Tony? Uh, it was cool because it's unexpected. It's always fun to do something unexpected. Mm-hmm. So I'll say yeah. a lot is really cool. Yeah, for sure. And then the next question. All right. Is he single? Big question. Yes. He's single. Yes. Okay. To my mom uh-huh. listening. Yes. Yeah, okay. I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna just say down, and I had this conversation before the podcast. And okay, <laughs> all right. Uh, yes, Mrs. Rivera, he, she is single for now. Yes. Um, hey, for yeah, yeah, for now, for now, for, for now, now, right? What you're, you're gonna be well, single yeah, forever? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yes. No, um, okay, next question, more serious one. Are you going to? Are you gonna go pro? Yeah, I'm going pro. For sure. Like for sure, um, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. I'm focusing on my studies, but yeah, I want. I want to go pro. That's good. That's good. Hey, mm-hmm. when, when you do reach the top, you know, hit me up. We can. <laughs> I that's hope so. I mean, <laughs> uh, I hope that. Guys, yeah, guys show, me, show, show, me the, show me the gold medal, man. Show me the gold medal. Yeah, if I win something, I have to give a speech. I'll be like, shout out to Tony. Hey, well, you're you going to come back time. on the podcast. You're going to come back on the podcast, <laughs> and we're gonna, it's going to be Don the Olympian. <laughs> gold medalist. We'll see. We'll see. Yes. Um, and then next question they have, uh, how have you been? very general i've been good 
Yeah, that's a really general question. I've been good. Um, you know, obviously COVID, mm-hmm. and then recent with the recent news of uh, what was it? World Juniors being canceled, and this is going to be my first year of U nineteen, like officially. Mm-hmm. So that that kind of sucked. Yeah. Um, but you know, you gotta keep your hopes up for mm-hmm. China because the next one is in China, mm-hmm. and I'm just really uh, training hard, just trying to not be too sad about mm-hmm. that being canceled, and just trying to. Mm-hmm stay hopeful i guess yeah 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 it, it is unfortunate that um the world juniors did get canceled i saw it on instagram because everybody who's going like posted like yeah oh, it was really demotivating know. yeah yeah it, it is and i really wish they they did something you know whether it was quarantine or something just make it work you know mm-hmm. but um but we understand it's a it's a difficult yeah. it's because it's such a big tournament you know? yeah yes yeah, and it's coronavirus and stuff going around so mm-hmm. i think it's just safer to just stay at home um yeah. but it's definitely a good experience i'm sure you'll get in it again for sure, you know, no so. doubt in my mind that you will, you will make it again. So, um, good luck to you for that. And then find the last question. I want you to okay. I want you to guess who who sent in this question. Okay, Don. Um, I'm gonna give you a hint. He's from the East Coast. Oh, and it's a guy. No, 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 no. Oh, was it? Okay. The question is, why is his butt so fat? Uh, who, who do you, who, you can answer the question first and then say say. Uh, <laughs> okay. Well, I'll just say I've been doing a lot of squats, so I'm kind of, mm-hmm. I'm kind of proud of my squats. No, uh-huh. so badminton, if you think about it too, badminton's like all squatting down and just hitting everything. So yeah, staying low. I'd say that. Staying low. Um who who do you think it is? I'm surprised it's not Street Cola. Uh I don't know. Jeanette? No. Was it Jeanette? Who was no. it then? I'll give you another hint. Oh, <laughs> this is too this is too this this hint is too big because if there's only two people that fits. Um I can't say this. This is too is it? you can choose me. Okay. You won't say it? You really won't say it? Okay, fine. I'll say it. You're going to get it once I say it. Okay, he's a white dude. Luke. Yeah, see. You, you, yes, go! There's only, there's only Clayton and then Luke. There's only Clayton, there's and, Clayton Luke. and Luke. Yeah, yeah so, so, so Clayton really. will never say that. Clayton will yeah, never say Luke, that. Luke, okay. Shout out to Luke because I remember him. Um, there was that photo of him versus Andrew Zhang in one of the tournaments, and they were both wearing, like, runner shorts. And you know how short those runner shorts are? Like, yeah. the boot, they're basically booty shorts for guys. And yeah. he was wearing the American flag, and then Andrew was wearing the China flag. It was so funny. Oh they're they're Luke, cool. I love Luke them. Luke is hilarious. Luke is hilarious. They're all so here. funny. Yeah. Yeah. It's always fun to have him around. But mm-hmm. that is the end of the podcast today. Thank you so much for coming in, Don, because I know you're a very busy dude, and uh, you have training right after this too. So, mm-hmm. um, thank you for coming. I appreciate you giving your time for to us. Um, and yeah, that's about it, man. Thank you for coming in. Thank you, Tony. Thank you for having me. For sure. And everyone else, remember, if you did enjoy the podcast today and you learned something from Don and I, um, make sure to click the like button and the subscribe button down below. Show some support for the channel. And it does help with the YouTube background, all that good stuff. All right, guys. So I'll see you guys in the next one. And thank you for coming in again, Don. Thank you.